Thank you. And... Action! Spock, nobody knows the rules better than you, but there has got to be an exception. None. Such action violates the Prime Directive. Spock, we're talking about your life! All these characters, at one point or another, have their lives on the line. Spock were here and I were there. What would he do? He'd let you die. Spock is willing to die to follow the rules. Doctor, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And Kirk is not willing to let his friend die just because of some rules. And that really sets them up at odds early on. Admiral... You filed a report? Why didn't you tell me? I incorrectly assumed that you would be truthful in your captain's law. Yeah, I would have been if I didn't have to save your life. One of the things that creates a problem at the beginning of this movie is that although there is greatness in Kirk, he's arrogant and he feels he's invincible, and that's really dangerous. There's a self-serving quality to Kurt. He kind of wants to prove that he's the best, that he can get away with all this, that he can win. Spock would rather abide by the rules and even lose his own life. That makes no sense to Kurt. Beyond that, he looked at Spock as a friend. And in fact, as much as he's upset that he's lost the ship, he's actually even more hurt that Spock doesn't get that. Do you understand? why I went back for you. This movie for Spock is a lot about understanding how important it is to be emotionally available, which is something that he's not particularly skilled at. The truth is, I'm gonna miss you. <sighs> Spock actually mind melds with Pike in the moment of his death. He communes with the emotional life of Admiral Pike as he's dying and gets a, a deeper glimpse into what it is to be human and what it is that human beings go through in the moment of their death. When Pike dies, his armor is shattered. And I think what you see is a Kirk that before he would have sat in the chair and been able to kind of wing it, he's just racked with doubt. I cannot allow you to do this. It is my function aboard this ship to advise you in making the wisest decisions possible. Something I firmly believe you are incapable of doing in this moment. You're right. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I only know what I can do. The Enterprise and her crew need someone in that chair that knows what he's doing. And it's not me. It's you, Spock. What makes a great story is always about selflessness. Like a myth teaches people to look outside of themselves. This act shows the greatest level of maturity for the guy that we've seen, I think, in two films. This is a, a selfless act and he's not thinking about how many points he's going to win or how crafty he is. This is him doing something for the people that he loves. Mr. Scott. Sir, you'd better get down here. Better hurry. The secret of this film, not unlike the first movie, is it's just as much Spock's film. When Kirk dies in the reactor as a result of radiation poisoning, that is what happened to Leonard Nimoy's Mr. Spock in The Wrath of Khan back in 1982. The difference is, in The Wrath of Khan, that scene was a punctuation to an end of a friendship. In this movie, this is a realization to Mr. Spock that they are friends. You saved the crew. He used what he wanted against them. That's a nice move. It is what you would have done. And this, this is what you would have done. What is it like to be a friend when you're not completely human and you've chosen to sort of live in this more logical and less emotional way. You can't think of two people more completely at odds with one another, both finding a certain amount of synthesis and, and balance. I want you to know why I couldn't let you die. Why I went back for you. Because you are my friend. This movie is about 
Kirk truly understanding what it is to be a captain, and Spock truly understanding what it is to be a friend.